making a response video on gun control that was just posted as a 313 for the week of Wednesday this week by Edge. I want to explain the biblical position so that people understand it. But let me first say my personal attitude so you know that the biblical position and my personal attitude are not the same. My personal attitude toward guns and violence as in general is anti. I was abused as a kid. I was beaten up very severely and had to go to the hospital. So violence is not exactly something I like. I know what it feels like. On the other hand, God says, sometimes you have to fight. You cannot fight if you are not trained. And he spent 400 years of Israel's life training them to fight. And then they were a bunch of wimpy cowards when he took them out of Egypt. So he made them run around 40 years in the land because they were wimpy cowards. Go read the story. That's what Book of Numbers means. It means numbers of troops. So if you want to be a wimpy Christian and say, oh, well, gun control isn't that bad. We already have gun control anyway. And besides, you know, this will stop the criminals. You're living in a dream world. And you're anti-God. Most of the Bible's text is about fighting. Isaiah 63, the Lord alone comes from Basra at the second advent and he wipes out a hundred, well no, that was Sennacherib. He wipes out everybody that's in Israel, in the land, who's fighting Israel in one blow all by himself. That's Isaiah 63 verses 1 through 10. And he wiped out 180,000 of Sennacherib's army camped out in front of Hezekiah. All in one day, he has no compunction about killing where it's warranted. So there are times to kill and there's a time for peace. We all know that from Proverbs. But we don't seem to care to analyze which is which. And we take one side or the other, either we're hawkish or we're peaceniks, Bible is always in the middle. There's always a yes and a no. And you have to know the boundaries or you're a bad Christian. Now, what are the boundaries? The boundaries are first that you have to train. You have to be able to wield your weapon. You have to know when it's right and when it's wrong. You have to know the rules, which means you have to know the Bible. Why did God command David to fight? David went to God every time with the Urim and the Thummim, that was the breastplate that the priest wore, and the stones lit up. Okay, yes, no, on the shoulders, and then there were the 12 tribes on the ephod, the thing that covered the guy's chest. Okay, where do I, do I go up or do I not go up? The story's all in 2 Samuel, read it yourself. And he trained and he worked hard at it and he killed a thousand Philistines at God's command. You have to learn how to fight and then you have to learn how to stop. That's the difference between a murderer and a professional soldier. A professional soldier does it because it's his job. A murderer does it because he likes how it feels. You can't like how killing feels and do a good job, I'm sorry. But if you say, oh, guns are bad because there's some teenager who killed a bunch of kids at a school so we should take away all the guns and that will stop the crime. No, it won't. Think, Bible, ask, God, yes we fight this time, no we don't fight that time. Unless you want another Hitler and another Munich and another set of terrorists. 
I'm telling you right now, I hate guns more than anybody. I don't even want to touch them. I hate violence more than anybody. I've been stabbed. I know how it feels. But I would have absolutely zero compunction to kill somebody who tried to enter my house. Zero compunction if I was in the military, which I don't believe women are supposed to be, but if it were true, I would have zero compunction about killing the enemy. I wouldn't care about it one way or the other. It's my job. You have a job. There's a lot of things about your job you don't like. Killing is not an enjoyable thing to a sane person, but it has to be done. Just as when the puppy pees on the carpet, if you talk nice to the puppy, he'll do it again. There are people in this world who, unless you are nasty to them, they will not learn. And the maximum nastiness is when a nation goes to war at you and wants to take your children away from you. Israel was ordered into the land because the people who were there were child-burning Canaanites. So, God ordered them wiped out. My question to God has always been, why did you wait so long? There's a time for niceness, and there's a time when not. And if you want to know what those times are, you better start reading your Bible on when they fought and when they didn't. About how when Saul was merciful to one of the kings that he beat, how Samuel said, okay, God's tearing the, the kingdom away from you and gave it to David, who fought all of his life. And to say that, well, the temple couldn't be built in David's day because he was a bad boy, he was a warrior. You don't know half the story about David. David got three time grants of a thousand years from God and three 490 year time grants and you wouldn't even be here if he didn't do that fighting at God's order. You don't believe that? Go look at my videos on the Pauline Anaphora timeline update. See how Paul is reconciling time to David. Christ was born based on a thousand years from David, the most warlike king in the Old Testament. So that's what God thinks of war. The reason why he waited until David was dead had to do with the timing, not because David was a warlike king. Learn your Bible and stop spitting on it. Peace out.